Smart Wool Merino base layers are so comfortable. They're the first thing you'll want to put on and the last thing you'll want to take off. No matter where you're at or where you're going. Because feeling good is the best way to keep you doing you. Smart Wool base layers. The most essential, versatile, and comfortable clothing for anything, anywhere. Shop base layers or find a local retailer at smartwool.com. Smart Wool. Go far. Feel good. Empire. Hello and welcome to the live stream edition of the John Conn Report. As you see, the voice of the commanders, Brian Weinstein, is with me. He's going to be here for at least 30 minutes, probably topping it off with about 30 minutes or so, answering your questions, going over some things, talking about the trade deadline, where is this team headed, all that good stuff. Thank you for tuning in. And don't forget, you will check us out the rest of the week. I'm going to have Kevin Seifert with ESPN talking about the Vikings on Thursday, keys and predictions. Maybe another special one before that, but I'll keep you posted. Anyway, let's get to it. Bram, trade deadline today. Yeah. William Jackson is gone. What do you think? I'm surprised. Um, not that they traded him. I'm surprised that they got a willing participant to trade for him. As far as I understand, the Steelers did take on the rest of the money for this year. I, I don't think there was any give back there, um, which I actually thought opened a hole um uh to potentially go after somebody um if there was something available to them but they didn't choose to go that way but i'm not surprised they traded him i mean obviously uh he wasn't going to play again here um and apparently pittsburgh really liked him and were concerned enough that if he got put on waivers they wouldn't get him so they made a move to get him and um i think you know it's better off for both parties frankly yes and they made it clear to him Rivera had sat down with him recently and basically said, Hey, both sides here made a mistake. You know, they made a mistake thinking that he could transfer to their defense. He made a mistake thinking he could do the same. Now money always plays a part in that. And it yeah. was, you know, if somebody gives me that much, I'm like, yeah, sure. I'll try it. <clears throat> I will say, Bram, when, when they signed him, I talked to people who didn't think he could really ever be his own corner. It's hard in this league to only be a man corner. The Steelers play more of it, but Every team plays heavy, you know, more typically more zone, but he just never, he was never comfortable. So, admitted the mistake. One of the he things to this, though, one of the things needs to be pointed out here um, he needs to pass physical. He does need to pass physical. I mean, Absolutely. and, you know, like, I, I think we all know he was benched and it's more than the back injury, but I believe him when he says he has a back injury. Oh, so I can wait on that. Pass physical for this to go through. He, he definitely had a bulging disc in his back. MRI showed that. And now the question is, you know, their feeling was that it had improved. Because if it hadn't, instead of cutting him, they would have put him on injured reserve. That's where I thought it was headed recently, but then the back did improve. And so they that's why if they hadn't traded him, they were going to cut him. As soon as they needed the roster spot, they would have cut him. So, but, so that's where we're at now with him. Um, Good move to trade him and get anything for him. I agree. Failed mistake. To me, you've got to now evaluate why did you think that he could do that? He definitely had skills. Sure. But I'm telling you, I talked to a couple of people right away, and they were they were convinced that he wouldn't work. And these are people who liked him as a player and what he could do in man, but they didn't think he'd ever work in zone. So they've got to evaluate where, where did they go wrong with this? Yeah. So, and, I, you know, the other thing, too, is like, I don't want to throw this all on him, obviously, but – how big plays have they given up since he stopped playing? And to be fair, you know, to him, um, what explosive offenses have they played? None. Right. I mean, they had, you know, the Colts, and we'll get into it, I guess, a little bit. But, like, I don't think that they even attempted a pass more than 10, 15 yards in the air um, until the second half, fourth quarter. Um, you know, they played the Bears who do not have an explosive offense at a quarterback that doesn't really, I think, make reads really quickly. He's more likely to escape, you know, than he is to throw a lot of, you know, um, multi-read type plays and try to convert them. Uh, Tennessee does not throw the ball downfield, right? So, um, and Green Bay, unusually, is not an explosive offense right now. So, 
you know, I don't want to be unfair to him. That said, um, name the big plays they're giving up. I mean, it's it's few and far between now. So all this stuff about communication on the back end and all that stuff, it appears that they removed a piece that was a problem. Well, listen, you can go back to the Detroit game to show an example why. And this is where he had the problem. So you would motion. Remember the Lions one time motion to a bunch formation on the right side. In that setting, there is a specific, okay, this motion here, I got this guy, you got this guy, you got this guy. It's an automatic switch, right? Everybody else switches, and it becomes a communication error of the secondary. No, it wasn't. One guy messed up, and it was him. And you get um, St. Brown going around or go, getting wide open for a 49-yard gain because he didn't cover the right guy. That happened too often. And so, like, now, Benjamin St. Juice gets beat by Alec Pierce for a long game the other day, but it was a straight the guy won the route. That happens, but it wasn't a, it wasn't getting beat because somebody took a, a um, mis, you know, played it wrong or whatever. So that's it's different. You're going to get beat. You know, against Philadelphia, they got beat a couple of times. It was it was not beat because of it was beat because Kendall Fuller got beat or somebody just out hustled, out jumped him for the ball. Different. So yeah, those communication errors have subsided, and I do like. And as Blaine Bowling said just on the live chat here, St. Juice is way better. St. Juice is better. And I where, where Jackson helped them was he was physical against the run. That was good. But in coverage, he just there you were limited ways you could do with him. And the communication stuff I really like. And you watch like Cam Curl. There was a play the other day, Bram, where it was a receiver screen to the left. And I'm watching Cam Curl and, and Bobby McCain before the snap. And I look at Cam and I'm just going to kind of like he motions, he motions like this. And so it kind of tipped him, you know, so McCain starts coming back, starts stepping back, almost like into a two deep safety look. And Curl just starts going boom, boom, pushing his hand forward. And so McCain goes forward about five yards. Because of that, the block could not get to McCain. And because of that, he stops him for a two yard loss. That's a communication, but, and that's separate. I think it's something I wanted to talk about and I saw it and spawned up at Anyways, Jackson's gone. Good move. Deron Payne's still here. What do you think? Uh, two quick things before I answer that question. To the person who asked, are you taking Q&A? Yes. Write yes. it in the chat. You got to ask this question, question first, my man. We will. We're not bringing you into the, if that's what you're asking. Yeah. Two, um, I don't wear leather jackets like this all the time. I did it on purpose. I'm trying to get the most out of my Halloween costume this year. Extraordinarily proud of it. As you know, I grew my hair out. I haven't done that in a very, very, very long time. So this year... I'm Danny Zuko, baby. T-Birds. T-Bird. I'm from Greece. All right, so that's why that's why I wanted to wear this, right? I want that's why I wanted to wear this. If you're if you're only listening to this, you just missed a spectacle. So there you go. Um, there you go. I'm proud of how I like dressing up. I'd go to a costume party once a month if we had them. So I'm getting the most out of my getting the most here. Uh, on right. Deron Payne, um, I think the right thing was done here. Yes, if he walks you know we can criticize that that all they got was a compensatory pick i'm pretty 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 sure um that uh they probably could have done better than that compensatory pick if they really put him out on the market but i don't know that for sure obviously um and then i would say this though like after they won the last two games the way their defense is playing the playoffs are a possibility for them i don't think you break this up and secondarily um, let's be real about what's going on here right now. Um, I don't know what's going to play out. I am not going to make some kind of like bold assessment that like Carson Wentz isn't playing again here, but the way things are going right now leads you to believe that an interesting decision will be made with that position. Now we're a ways away from having any kind of finality to it. And we're, you know, I, I was talking about this on my show the other day. I'm like, because our, my producer was basically trying to say that like it's Heineke's job. And I'm like, Okay, remember that uh, Cowboys game a month ago? That feels like eight years ago now, okay? Remember when they were one and four? That feels like eight years ago now. Things are going to change over the next nine weeks. Let's see where we are. But um, that said, like, if the dynamic of what the pay scale of what the quarterback position is going to be, and it's going to be different, then guess what? You can restructure how you think about other positions on your team, and then you can resign him. So... I think some of the reluctance initially was, can we afford all these guys if we have a $30 million quarterback? Right. Well, what if you don't? What if you don't? Right. That was on my list to talk about the exact same thing. 
that makes a difference in this whole situation because there's no guarantee for money for Wentz after this year. Now, you don't want to – I mean, the, the bad part for them is that you would have given up two draft picks for one year of Carson Wentz, and you know we've seen barely the best of him. So that would not be good. Um, but it does, it may make you, it may enable you to keep paying. And I know they want to try to keep him. If you want to try and keep him, you keep him here. The reason why this team has a chance at the playoffs is because that defensive line and those two tackles in particular, they've been fantastic. John Allen destroyed Quentin Nelson the other day. He owned him. And, you know, he made big play after big play, you know, tackles for losses. Allen has one of the highest tackles for loss in the league, but he and Payne are a terrific pair. I brought up the play that Payne made to, to get to Ellinger on that third down. If he doesn't if he doesn't hustle his ass off over there, it's a first down, and, and who knows where it goes from there. So, you know, the guy, both those guys can play. You keep him if you think you want to try and sign him, then you keep, you do what you can to try and keep him. Yeah, I also think – People on this roster, John, I think they need to resign. I, I, I He's going to be very expensive, so you have to make a decision here, but it will depend on what the cap situation looks like, and I think namely a quarterback, and they – also removed they're gonna have some dead money next year but they also removed what was a very big salary in William Jackson the third that was scheduled to be on the roster um as well you know the other ones are Cam Curl you're gonna have to do something here like <laughs> yeah, he's good. Do something here like he is too integral to them and to their defense I think Cole Holcomb's an interesting case here like mm-hmm. what if he gets to the open market does he get like an Aluacon contract because they're not gonna pay that if that happens but if they get ahead of it you know, it might be the right thing to do. And then the other one, of course, is going to be, we don't have to deal with it now, but in a month or two, if Heineke's still playing, you have to talk about re-signing him. He's actually going to be a free agent. You can't franchise him. So you're going to have to actually talk about what does that number look like for him if you want to retain him long-term, either as the primary backup or under this scenario that we're talking about, where it could be that he's starting or competing for the starting job with a lower paid other option, Sam Hall, Sam Hall, someone else, you never know. Good health starts with good habits. Quip makes it easy by delivering all the oral care essentials you need for your mouth. The Quip electric toothbrush has timed sonic vibrations to guide a dentist recommended two minute clean with sleek and stylish designs starting at just $20. Quip also delivers fresh floss, toothpaste, mouthwash, and gum refills every three months from $5. Go to getquip.com slash brush right now to get your first refill free. That's G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash brush. Let's take a second to talk about something businesses love, reaching audiences. Amazon ads helps brands connect with audiences through their passions. Here are some examples. You can huddle up with sports fans during Thursday night football exclusively on Prime Video or connect with all the creative communities on Twitch and show up for streamers when they binge watch their favorite shows. Audiences know what they like and with touch points for every passion, Amazon ads knows how to reach them. Matthew Joyner wants to know, he wrote on in here, do you think, he says, do you think we can make the playoffs with Taylor at QB? Thank you. I Ram, do. what do you think? I mean, listen, yeah. it depends on what the number is. Uh, you, you, <laughs> you don't need to ask me that question. You know, yeah, no, I'm like, I, I'm the king of the guy's fan club. I've been that three, way since last year. I mean, you know, you guys kid me on the sideline constantly during practice, even during the summer where I'm like, that's my guy over there. Like I, I, I see the limitations, but I'm, I am done talking about what he can't do. I want to talk about what he is doing. The guy's seven, three in his last 10 games. He's beaten Aaron Rodgers. He's beaten Tom Brady. He has beaten uh, Derek Carr. He's beaten Russell Wilson. I know he beat Ellinger the other day. They had, they posted a couple stats that are utterly ridiculous. Like from the other day, they had two drives that started inside their 20 fourth quarter scores inside of five minutes to win that game. That's the first time that's happened for this team since 1981. Like he is winning. Like, I don't care what it looks like. All I know is this guy's got a feel for the game. I know this guy has the locker room right now. I don't know if he's the long-term future, but look how they play. Look what kind of energy they have. Look what kind of belief they have in this guy. Look what he can do when the reins come off and you let him kind of free form a little bit when you have to. I love this guy. I well, love him. And for the here and now, yes, I think they can make the playoffs. With him. Yeah. And I, and again, with three wild cards. Yeah. I think so too, because you're talking probably nine, nine wins will get you probably in there and the wild card this year. So can he get there? Can they get there with him? Yeah. If, if other factors hold up and it's, it's um, 
I agree, by the way, with that comment that they got to score some points this week. I totally agree with that. And I actually, it's something I'd like to talk about for this week, too. All right. Well, let me, let me, yeah. can I address that first? Because yeah, he said, take, so, I think it's Saba Hutubful. I think I botched that, but it says, I will, it will take 28 points to win. Scott needs to let Taylor Tango go up tempo to decrease the pass rush. Well, a couple of things. When they tried to do that last year with Taylor Heineke, they were not winning. They started to win when they went to a different sort of style of offense. That doesn't mean, you know, I don't think this is an offense that's built to just go up tempo. When you go up tempo like that, you're limiting what you can do offensively. So I think in spurts that works, but I don't think the answer is going up tempo. The answer is always converting on third down. And, and I do think they have to continue to use that run game because that's how you're going to win. When they had their four game winning streak, it was the run game that powered it. And then Taylor can make plays off of that. You know, he's a good play action passer and, you know, you make plays of it this year, the last couple of games, it's really, you know, Gibson getting some stuff on the outside in the pass game and in the run game. And I think Robinson last week in the run game. So you have to have that. You can't just let him sit back there and, and throw the ball. That's just not how this offense or how he is built. You know, like, I, this is an interesting comment here. It's like, do you think he needs to go 13 and four and still Ron won't compliment him and won't let him be the quarterback of the future, AKA the glass ceiling. Um, look like, you know, this is, this is complicated because we have, you know, a one voice structure. Um, the GM of this team determined they needed to upgrade a quarterback. They did physically for sure. Um, they also spent a lot of money and assets to do it. Um, do they feel, you know, pressure to, you know, validate the decision. And that's an interesting thing that we need to deal with. And Rivera has two more weeks to not have to think about it because Carson, because, because Carson Wentz is not eligible to come off of the IR. In two weeks, we can then talk about it and let's see where their record is. But for crying out loud, if they win the next, somehow win the next two, and for everyone who's writing like they have a hard time with Minnesota, I, we can talk about that in a minute. Um yeah, the Philly game is going to be tough Monday night. If they're three and one or somehow four and over that stretch, he's starting like <laughs> they're not changing. If he's three and like cold, that's Graham, they they're three three and one. Philadelphia, and yeah. they're they beat an undefeated Eagles team on Monday night. He's not getting pulled. Like that's not no, happening. No. He's not getting pulled, and you know. So I think that's that's a lock, right? If he's three and one. Now this is switching gears a little bit. Steve Moody says the D didn't seem to miss Holcomb as much as I thought they might, and I wanted to put this up there because I think it leads to an interesting part. And the reason, one thing with this defense that I really like, you go back to that three safety alignment. Cam Curl is a smart mother effort. And that's why they could go out there and play the way they did. They used a 5D line set much more than they have in other games. And um, But Curl's ability to, he wore the green dot, he was calling the signals. Then they also had the versatility to put McCain in the slot. So you could use those three safeties one is a linebacker, one up in the slot. They ha- is, so that's why they could do it. Mayo, <laughs> Mayo almost gets – Mayo was this close to a pick six if he gets that ball. So And Mayo and Bostic are solid against the run. So that – I think the style of game enabled them to – I felt like they wouldn't miss Holcomb as much as maybe others thought because the style of game would be to their – to that, yeah. to that. But I think this week, I think you'd miss him. You'd feel it a little bit more. The other part of that 5D line set, Bram, and I tweeted about this earlier – John Ridgway is a, is, a, is, a, is a beast inside. I think he's going to be a really good player for them as he develops. Now, it may only be in a um, you know role player kind of way, but I think he was a nice pickup for them. So that was a good find. But you watch him against Ryan Kelly the other day. He had some really good stops where he just stones him and just kind of locks him, looks for the ball, and goes gets it. And, it, in fact, on that last series at the Colts, or the, last, the next to last one, he has a two-yard stop, I think, in a play that looks like there might be a hole, but he's just controlling Kelly and goes and gets him. But that enables them to then play a different style than they ordinarily would. They're going to wear out Allen and Payne because they're playing those guys a lot. Yeah. But, but So I thought last week that I didn't think they'd miss him as much as they would in some other games. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I want to thank the Colts, too. I mean, <laughs> they fired their <laughs> offensive coordinator. I mean. Washington's missing their leading tackler. They're already thin at the position. They'd prefer not to play the other linebackers. Everybody knows this. It's not a secret. Um, it probably didn't take them long to figure out that the green dot is on a safety's helmet. Um, they come out with five defensive linemen and three safeties, and they do this over and over. Hello? Like, hello? What are you guys doing? But that's your, hey, that's your problem. That's your mess to clean up. 
and you started cleaning up by firing somebody over what I thought was, I mean, the advantage they had by putting this quarterback out there was we had no freaking idea what they were going to do. None. Zero. We had, we had no tape on this guy. He's never played in a regular season game. The coaches were talking about watching tape from him from Texas. They have no idea. You know, and the element of surprise in the NFL is very hard to pull off. They had an amazing opportunity to do it, and they chose not to. They right. chose not to. So thank you, Indianapolis, because right. I don't know what they were thinking on Sunday. Well, and they fired their offensive coordinator today. Justin Check wants to know any word yet on Holcomb's, and he asked to in a fall of health or contract. This is health. There, there's yeah, there's health. nothing with there's nothing with a contract right now. You don't do that stuff in the middle of the season. Um, but it, for him, it's health. It's his foot. We'll know more on Wednesday about him, Jahan Dotson. I, I think Dotson, like when you're dealing with the hamstrings and you re-aggravate it, you don't come back. You don't come back within a couple of weeks on that. But with Holcomb, we'll know more on Wednesday. And then I'm going to go back to this one. He's written a couple of things that um, Sabo, who too, for all, why do these coaches hate Taylor? His players love him. Heineke be should give him the offseason's QB1. Co- coaches don't hate him. They Listen, don't hate nobody him. else. They gave him a- Contract. They gave a contract. <laughs> They're the ones. I mean, they, they, they don't hate, they don't, yeah. they don't hate well, him at all, but they know no, who he well, is. Well, There's nobody in this league that thinks he's more than what he is, is a high end backup, low end starter. And there's <laughs> nothing know. wrong with that. <laughs> well, but you know, I, like, but there's, there, there, are, when you want, when you start talking QB1 and give him the Aussies and all that, now you have to start looking at other things with it. I love the guy. I mean, you know, I, I love his story. But you then have to say, okay, when you're just going to say, look, like somebody on Twitter asked me about, you know, rolling with um, uh, Howell, Howell and Heineke and letting them compete. No, you you have to still, if you, if there's a chance to get a guy this offseason, you still got to get a guy. Um, but I like having Heineke around in case you don't. And I think he's a guy that you can certainly go win with right now. But then you start to, when you have to start to evaluate what is the ceiling here, Wentz has a higher ceiling. Now, that could end up to be a really bad trade, and Heineke bails him out. But I don't think that, first of all, they don't hate him. No, and secondly, I do all. not, if you, if you want to take that step. He wouldn't you know, be on I the would, team if they didn't like him. He wouldn't be on yeah, the team. No, like, just because they they're. They to bring him back. Yeah, and they just did, because they're not playing, just because they didn't start him doesn't mean they hate him at all. Um, and yeah, players like them a lot. Players also know the limitations. So, you know, they, they're, you know, so let's, you know what, John, you know, and here's the thing. And this is why I don't want to talk about limitations anymore. <clears throat> Name the quarterbacks out of a select four or five that don't have limitations. Like what? Like, what are we talking about here? Right. Like, I mean, you're okay, talking about physical. Josh attributes. Allen isn't here. Pat Mahomes isn't here. Okay. Like they're lucky to have guys like that. If we happen to draft this kid from Kentucky and he turns into Josh Allen, awesome. Okay. Like if that happens, awesome. But until that day comes, everybody else is looking around for their quarterback constantly, and all of them have flaws. Every single one of them. But all I see is this guy winning. I see this team rallying around him. And I'm just done talking about what he can't do. And let's just start talking about what he is doing. Like, they so, like this guy. They play for this guy. This team plays really hard. And you know what? He has got a natural feel for the game. He really oh, yeah. does. Like, come on. Go watch that last drive and tell me this guy doesn't know what he's doing Listen, on the field. It's watch. not too big for him. And I don't care that he doesn't have the best arm. This guy is a winner. You can feel it. And that's why, like, I'm okay with them moving forward here. I agree with you. Everyone sees the limitations, but they're winning with the guy. What is wrong with that? So an OG DMV says franchise player's job is to elevate. Taylor elevates the line. The wide receivers elevate Heineke. It's simple. Pay that man 10 million and build this team. 10 million is perfect. But I, you know, but I would still say, even if you pay him, like that's, that's just like what they pay Fitzpatrick. That's like, Hey, you can be the starter. But if we if there's another guy, maybe we get him. So if you, yeah, I would do that, and then you go to the draft, and a guy falls in your lap. There you go. And if not, then you can okay, go ahead. You know what this guy can do. So I'm okay with that part. But I don't think you just automatically just say, "Hey, Daniel Jones is starting." Yeah, he is. Somebody else said that, but you know, he's he's got some attributes. Exactly. Oh, hey, 
Like, but did, watch did what he was doing the other day. Like, did you see Burrow last night? Like, I think Burrow's awesome. But like, like seriously, like there are limitations on almost everybody. Like <laughs> in New England, they're screaming to put Bailey Zappi in, and he looks he's shorter than me. Like they were looking at they were trying to put him in the other day. There are he have a team you don't jacket? have the guy guy. Okay, everybody goes through this, but we're winning with this guy. He keeps us in games. Yes, he makes mistakes. Which quarterback doesn't? Like, which one doesn't? All right, there you go. That's Bram's word. And and like I said, I, I have here, like, what I what I really want to see from this team in the offseason more than even a quarterback is get that line right because that's going to help him. Whoever you get back there, you've got to build that line right. So that leads to another question from Twitter from Pry. He said, John, your thoughts on what Turner and Cosme can do on the right side. Turner played well at guard versus the Jags. And yesterday, starting one of yours hurt during the struggles. Turner looked strong, and so was Cosme. So you're right. Turner played a better game. Some of the issues that he had earlier, <laughs> Mass Collector says Bram is right. There you go. Early, some of the problems that Turner had earlier, to me, was not as much. He had some physical errors, without a doubt. But there were some mental mistakes that he made as well. And that's what was concerning to me. But he did play a better game. The hard, so I think with he and Cosme on the right side, well, let's see where Turner goes this week and then against the Eagles. Uh, but, you, yeah, you could build something nice there. I still think Cosme's best spot eventually is at right guard. When you right. talk to this, t- these t- this team, the, they play, the, the way they organize the priority of the line, it's left tackle, center, right guard. So you've got to get right guard, right? Um, so I think that's, that's where Cosme I, – I, my feeling would be that's where he's eventually best suited for. But that may be, you know, whether that's Lucas at right tackle now – or in the offseason, drafting a tackle or finding another right tackle, whatever, however it goes. So, but for the season, I think they're just going to have to mix and match on that line. Brand, we've talked about that one to death. So, um, I don't think they have a combination that's going to work that's going to be great. And like I yeah, see a lot I, of people like asking the question: Is Taylor Heineke elevating the line or masking the issue? And I'm going to go with masking the issue. He's masking the issue. Yes. Last week it was crazy. I rewatched that Green Bay game, and I'm like, oh my god, like. He was under pressure on every play. And as it turned out, like us, I think Sam Fortier wrote the piece about it where he was like, the pressure rate was higher in that game than in any other one this season. Right. But it was his mobility and his feel for the offense that got them out of trouble a little bit more. This particular team they just faced, like that also is a really good pass rush, really good pass defense. They had a high pressure rate again. And when I do rewatch it again, I think I'm going to see the same thing that he was able to manufacture some plays. Absolutely. And so, you know, like, and that's why, like, you know, because I'm going to jump off here pretty soon. Minnesota doesn't have a defense like this. So this is the first time in really weeks, you know, maybe, maybe the Chicago game, but Tennessee's top 10 defense, especially up front, they weren't that great on the back end, but up front they are. Uh, Culture top 10 defense, Green Bay. I know everyone talks about Aaron Rodgers as a legit top 10 to top five defense that they faced the other day. We know what Dallas is. We've seen what the Eagles are doing. Washington has actually had a very tough run of defensive team that they have faced, whether it's Wentz or um, Heineke under center. That's not the case this week. So that's why when someone said like, I want to see them score 28, so do I. This is the week where the offense needs to get creative because they should have more opportunity to put points on the board. And if they do, and they throw up 28, 31, whatever, and somehow pull out a win this weekend, I think more people are going to start getting on the Heineke bandwagon. Oh, and, and make no mistake about it. I think they can make the playoffs with them. I just think it's when you're saying, okay, where do you go from there? I would, I'm would. i okay if they just say, hey, signing them back, give them that Fitzpatrick deal, and then if, if he's the guy, he's the guy. If you find someone else, you find someone else. That's okay. But, yeah, Commander's fan in Texas said Taylor's scrambling ability is definitely masking the line, and I agree with that. That play he had on fourth and one, there was a defensive end coming up the middle, and somehow it's almost like he's like, ah, oh, and he retreats and gets out of there. Not many people are getting out of there. He makes plays with his legs. And there are times there are times where um, you might see the, the ball takes a little bit to get there. The receivers have to slow down, but it's there. And when you throw the anticipation, it gets there. The interception was as much – on that interception, there was, they had an issue with his drop on that, where the, it led to a different angle for the defensive end. And it made it harder for Taylor Larson to block him. But the other issue is, and that leads to him getting his arm hit. It, like they liked the decision, and while it looked like all these guys are converging, if he gets rid of the ball, 
if he gets rid of the ball there and he gets to him, it's a, it's probably a good completion. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm good with the guy. I do think, like I said, my priority for them would be build the line, get something really good and build a really strong yeah. line this weekend, Bram, like the only question, the only, like, I think they can open it up. The only question I had, or the only comment really was the up tempo stuff. I, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of that with what they have. Um, I think it's, I think you're better off. You can control it with the short pass game. You control it with some big plays that he can make big plays. McLaurin, uh, you know, and it's funny. Here's a funny thing, Brent. We haven't even talked about McLaurin at all on this one. And, you know, and, and here's a, can I, I always want, I'm going to, I'm going to say one more thing. You're going to say a couple of things and I'll continue for about five, 10 more minutes. On McLaurin, one of the things that I really appreciate about him, we can talk about the work, and he talks about going and improving as a contested pass catcher and all that. I love watching him and talking to him about facing these other these various corners, and he knows how to attack them because he studies it a lot. And there were a couple of times with Gilmore. There were a couple of times with him where – he knows that Gilmore likes to give you cushion. So you've got to look, you've got to shrink that cushion as much as you can. So when you're coming off the line, you can't st- stutter step and try and go. He's just going to be patient, backpedal and go. He gets him on that long pass reception because he just goes boom. And, and it, it seemed to catch Gilmore off guard by the way he released. And it's like, I love watching that. Then you watch him in other releases, they're different releases. And he got him. He got him a couple times where the ball wasn't thrown to him because it was supposed to go elsewhere or whatever. He had a, a go route where it's a go and a stop. He gets wide open because he attacks the cushion. Because that's how, like, that's a, to me, that's one of the un, understated things about him. About not just all the other qualities we talked about, but the kid is a really smart um, player and he studies it too. So, Bram, here you go. You, I know you want to get you got to get off, and I'll continue yeah. for a few minutes. Uh, if you th- on McLaurin, I, I don't really have anything else to say about him other than he's just been utterly unbelievable. I'm glad the world's getting to see it a little bit. Um, I, I'm not as a prolific writer as you, but I do write a piece for commanders.com. And last week I wrote an ode to him. So you can see how I feel about him a week ago. I wrote one to Heineke on ESPN.com. I didn't, and see, I, your, oh, I today, didn't see your name on that one for you. Yeah. Today's <laughs> for you on commanders.com. I wrote a piece about the most, I think what is the most unheralded part of the turnaround of this season which is in five of eight games this year, they have had the defense has stopped a team inside their own 10 for no points. And the vast majority of those drives were stopped in drives started inside the five. Yeah. Zero points. Okay. Unbelievable. Actually, it happened three times in the Chicago game and it's happened once in four other games of which I need to talk to your ESPN stats people to go. Is that as unusual as I think it? Because it is ask them. truly amazing how much that's happened. Uh, as for this weekend, no particular take about it yet, other than to say they have played for really, you know, maybe not Chicago, but like for better defenses and kind of non-prolific offenses the last four weeks. This week, obviously, they're facing a very different um, offense. And... Um, but they're facing a much weaker defense than they face. Yeah. And just therefore my early gut feel is it's time for the offense to score some points this week. Um, that, that I just, it, I think it's going to be on them a little bit, hold up their end of the bargain. Like the Colts, the Packers and the Titans are all very good defenses. So are the Cowboys. So are the Eagles. They've actually had quite a run of defenses this year that they have faced. Um, this weekend is not the case. So let's see the offense score some points. They put some little pressure on Heineke and Turner and company to figure it out a little bit and get some points. And lastly, one more time. T-Birds. Look at that. Bram showing his coat. If you're not watching it, you're missing out. By the way, Richard Bernay says, yes, Taylor could probably take us to the playoff, but can we win a ship with him? Well, the owner already has a ship, so I don't know. But um, (laughs) there we go. That's the question I have. But – what he does give you is he buys you time to now get that guy. So if you're not sold, you don't have to go out and maybe make a trade to get a Carson Wentz now. Cause if you, if this guy does take you to the playoffs and wins a playoff game or does something like that, now he buys you time to then, okay, you don't see your guy build this, this, and this, and keep building this, which is what Rivera had been talking about really before last off season. So that's where he buys you. Um, maybe not, the, maybe not a championship, but he get, buys you the time to get there. And then who knows? Um, Bram, if you got to go, I will take over from here. 
and answer some more questions. And Steve Mooney says, I, they win Sunday. Bram, if they win Sunday, Bram needs to keep wearing that jacket. I would say he needs to wear it to the game. <laughs> Done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you like that. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And Hamza MD says, I'm actually impressed with Bram's hair. Yeah. Well, I would you know, take mine off, my hat off, but yeah. I have a hat head and I'm not going to do that. So Listen, people, I'm going to be 50 in a couple months. How good do I look? Oh, snap. How wow. good do I look? Wow. I, All I right. Mean, how do I, I gotta go? My kids are yelling for me. All I right, gotta Graham. run. Yep. Thank you. And everybody stay tuned. I'm going to keep going here. I'm going to answer a couple more questions. We'll go about another five minutes. This episode is sponsored by State Farm. Buying insurance can be complicated. And you might have a lot of questions. Like, what if my policy doesn't cover that? Or what if I need to make a claim in the middle of the night? Good news. State Farm is there for all your what ifs. You can reach them 24-7, talk through any questions with your agent, and you can even file a claim on the State Farm mobile app. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or go to statefarm.com to get a quote today. I want to make sure I get to a couple more questions because I appreciate you guys joining me, and I know there's some more things to talk about. So, Todd Ray on Twitter says, I'm bummed at by the lack of news or even reports we didn't make an attempt to do much of anything. I have tempered expectations about maybe trying to find a depth piece, someone that can slide into a DB spot or something at all. We did a we did a whopping nothing aside from WJ3. You're right. They didn't do anything. And I, it's hard at these deadline deals. I think if you're a, in a great position and you need that one or two pieces, great. And if you have some spare capital, future capital, future assets, great. It doesn't happen very often it feels like there was more um i know like the dolphins make a move but you know usually you're getting spare parts so if you want to get a good cornerback let, let's look at the business they really need a good cornerback right but you're not going to find that right now you're going to get guys like the william jackson types etc so that's that's a little bit harder i don't know i'm not going to spend a lot on that um but the problem is they need it and, and i get that i think to, to find the corner they need, they're going to have to wait till the offseason. Otherwise, you're probably getting guys comparable to what you already have. You're not going to find what you want. There's not going to be a Jalen Ramsey type that suddenly is free, although he was a couple of years ago. If that is, then you can go get a guy like that. Short of that, I would be very judicious with it. Um, I think the hard part is that, you know, they they need to make some more moves that obviously work. And you can go back and look at the Jackson signing. And I talked about this on Twitter a little bit, how some of their big money guys have not produced enough over the years. And that goes back before this regime. So I think that's what makes McLaurin and John Allen stand out. Those guys have been fantastic since they got paid, but they're also the kind of guys who would, who would be great after they get paid because they want to prove it more. But yeah, no, there wasn't as much, there wasn't any action here. They didn't improve themselves where they can improve themselves. You get Chase Young back. That's going to happen. He's going to practice on Wednesday. He's supposed to practice on Wednesday this time for sure. Uh, then you get him back probably for the Eagles game. That's adding a piece to this roster now. Where is he going to be at when he comes back? Hard to say. You know, when you get Sam Cosby back, that helps the line. You get um, Jahan Dotson back, that helps the receiver crew, which then helps Taylor Heineke. So I think there are ways that they can still improve internally. And then you have to hope for them that Jamin Davis and Cole Holcomb continue to progress. Those guys that play well, I keep getting asked about getting better linebackers. Those two are not the problem on defense. There are little things that Davis and both Davis and Holcomb can do better. Absolutely. They're not perfect. Davis is still progressing. You see sometimes some issues with false steps or something like that. But by and large, you know, he made some big time plays the other day, got beat on one route, but it was a good route by the back. But also he made some big time stops. So you know, those guys aren't the issue. The corner is one. O-line is the other. Can will Sam Cosme, when his when his hand is better, will he come off and help? Would you have been better off going and getting somebody? Well, only if they know your offense. Listen, the guy that you could still go get if you really wanted to was Eric Flowers. Don't know what kind of shape he's in. That's the guy. And that's one of the problems here, too. Like, Turner did a better job, but their guards are not good in space. And it limits the screen game they can run. And you see, like, there are a lot of times where – hey, that's a good screen, except that you didn't make the block. That's a problem. The one screen that worked was a tight end screen, which was set up beautifully. It was sold. It was a good play call, good play design. The line sold the run. Armani Rogers sold the run block. 
sneaks out, and then he's got the athleticism to make a guy miss. If that had been any other tight end on this roster, it stopped for five yards. But Rodgers gets it for whatever it was, like 20 or something like that. So anyway, so there are pieces they can use to improve internally. You know, Again, Dotson hasn't been part of this win streak, and nor has Chase Young, nor has Sam Cosme. You get those guys back, and now you're better. Now, I know you like more, but again, the bigger the bigger help will have to come in the offseason, unfortunately for you guys. Um, let's see, another one, Schmitty Takes. And Schmitty Takes is the one who talked about Howell and Heineke um, duking it out. Heineke's better right now. And now let's see, with Howell, I, it'll be curious to see where he is next summer and how far he progresses. He might be a bigger version of – a slightly bigger, more stronger arm version of Heineke, but then it always comes down to – it's going to come down to up here. What do you know and how fast can you process and what are you seeing, et cetera? Anyway, there I already kind of addressed that one, but Schmitty Takes also said, points out that seven of the next nine opponents are projected NFC playoff teams as of today. If the commanders want in, they'll have to earn it. And the teams obviously are the Eagles, Vikings, Falcons, Cowboys, Giants twice, and 49ers. Then you also have the Browns in there and the Texans on the road. The Browns, they're going to have Deshaun Watson. I don't know what they're going to look like at that time. We also don't know like what are the how the Falcons are you know they're they're certainly a beatable team. The Giants, who they're six and two, where are they going to be like? What are they going to look like then? I don't know that I trust their roster to be in it for the long haul, but we'll see. They've already kind of they've already won more games than I think most people thought. So we'll see when that time comes. But he's right that it's not the easiest. It's a competitive stretch that they're going to face. There aren't a ton of good teams in this league. So Eagles very tough. Obviously, Cowboys going to be very tough. I think everybody else on their Niners, what are they going to look like at that point? They could also be playing for a playoff spot as well. So that's going to be a tough one. So, yeah, there's some tough games. I think we'll learn a lot about them. I think that's one reason why Ron Rivera was frustrated after the game is because he knows the bar has to be raised. Yes, they've won three in a row, but in his mind, it's like these guys have to do a little bit better if they want to beat the Vikings, if they want to beat the Eagles. They're going to have to be more consistent in their assignments. There are a couple of times where, whether it's, whether it's um, the way some of the line, some of the ends played the run, played a particular run or a couple pass rushes, but it wasn't just the D line as far as blown missed assignments or it was, but there were a couple like that. And there are a couple here, a couple there, but he wants the message out that that can't continue because there's a lot on the line now with every one of these games. So, but you're right. It does get tougher from here. All right. Let's see what kind of, um, Let's see, Yeshua, the beginning and the end. Does this season feel like the season where Doug Williams got hurt and Jay Schrader came in and led us to the playoffs and Doug came back and won the Super Bowl? LOL, anyone. All right, I'm glad you put that at the end. So there you go. I think you answered it. No, it doesn't. Not yet. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see what else we have here. All right, and Todd Labor wants to know, do, 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 does Washington have enough money to keep Deron Payne and Taylor Heineke? Yeah, they can cut Carson Wentz. If that's what they do, then you're going to have the money. But that's always been the tricky part with paying because not only paying, but then you're going to have to pay. What are you going to pay Montez Sweat? A year or two ago, you would have thought, well, if he produces, he's going to be aligned for a $25, $30 million contract. Well, that's not where he's at right now. Then you also have to, what about Antonio Gibson? What do you do with him when he's up? Cam Curl, Cole Holcomb, as Bram talked about earlier. There are other guys you're going to have to consider. And then if Chase Young produces the way they hope he does, if he gets back to that, second half of the rookie year production, then you're going to have to pay him. But I remember talking to um, some, an NFC executive about Deron Payne. Would you trade him? What would you, what do you think the value is? And it was, if they could sign, if, if a team could sign him to an extension, the value is a second rounder. And, you know, he, his comment was, if you think you can't keep him, you trade him. But his opinion was you keep those guys together because that's the strength of this team. And I agree, do what you can to keep them together. So yeah, I do think they'll have enough money to do um, you know, so the, I think that's, there you go. Um, and OG DMV says three and one, you can't sit Taylor Heineke. I agree. And I don't think they will. And here we go. Steve Moody cousins can lose to anyone. Well, I think we have seen that now Kirk cousins. I have a conversation with ESPN's Kevin Seifert. Again, that's going to be on Thursday. We talk a lot about Kirk cousins and what he's been like in Minnesota. Um, he's a good quarterback. Listen, I haven't, I don't, I think I've said this before, but when this team was looking for a quarterback last offseason, they called the Vikings. They called them because they want to see, is Cousins even available? Well, he clearly wasn't, so they moved on. But they were going to call every team that had a question at quarterback, 
and what they were going to do with them. So that was one of them. So you guys may have been rooting for him again. I don't know how, I think that was kind of far-fetched, but they did at least inquire about him, but you're right. Yeah. I mean, we've seen, we've seen cousins. I mean, he's, and this is one thing Seifer talked about when I talked to him today about it, he's going to make some play. What he's doing now is he's making plays at the right time to win games. It's, so he's almost, that's, that's a lot of what Taylor Heineke's doing, right? That's what he did the other day. Made plays when they needed it most. And that's, that's how this league works. And, and he's been good in the situational aspects of the position. So there you go. And then Logan Hamza MD said Logan Paulson pointed out that Scott Turner is his most creative after bite or bites, buys or pseudo buys, meaning you know, you get the longer break after the Bears game, you get the first game of the year. I don't know if that's just a coincidence or not. Um, I you have to study it more. I think it's also what also helps is converting on third down, it gives you more chances. And so you can get into a little bit deeper into your playbook. But you know, Logan's a smart guy. So there you go. But I I I you know, I think there were times last year where I saw games where I felt like he called a good game, and I don't think they were coming off buys. Sometimes again, are you guys making plays or not to extend drives as well? And because you need that too. It's everybody puts so much on the play call. And I agree it's a big deal. The design and the calls are big. But sometimes guys just have to win no matter what's called, and it's there, and a guy might drop a pass. Or for example, you know, there was there was the third and 10 play the other day. The slant to McLaurin gains nine yards. Well, a better ball, and it's an easy 12-yard game. He put it inside. Hale Heineke puts it inside, and it gets for nine yards. Well, on the next play, I know people call it like, oh, it's just a run. Be more creative on that situation. Well, Bates loses his block on the edge, and it kills the cutback lane. But if Robinson stays play side, it's a first down. So no matter what the call is, there's still ways that guys can win because that's why they get paid a lot of money. But whether, you know, again, Logan's a smart guy. So, you know, I think there's, I, I, I like what Logan has to say. So there you go. And then Colin Taylor wants to know, do you think Chase Young is going to play this week? And I did address this earlier, Colin, but he's going to practice this week. I don't think he'll play. I think that's asking a lot. They want to make very sure with him that this he's there for the long haul. It's not just rushing back um, to the first week he plays. They want to build up the conditioning etc. And so I would look more so for the Eagles game than anything else. All right, guys, listen, I've gone 45 minutes. That's about all I've got here for you today. I appreciate you tuning in. I always, always, always do. And thanks to Bram for joining me. And you can listen to him on ESPN 630. You can read my work on ESPN.com. I will have a story up. I believe it's Wednesday, basically asking, how good is this team? Do we really know? We're going to find out. And then we'll all know after the next two weeks, if they split these next two games, I think you can say, hey, this team might be capable of, of getting in there. You know, if not, then we'll see. Anyway, I appreciate your time. I'll be back on Thursday with Kevin Seifert from ESPN talking about the Vikings, Kirk Cousins, Kevin O'Connell. There also may be another guest that I have for you on Wednesday, but I'm not going to say until I know for sure. Then if I do, you'll find it on Wednesday. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. And I'll talk to you next time.